I became the world's greatest Reinet Battlers player is something I can claim because no one plays it. But you should because it's awesome. God, I know this is a virus. Ah, Damn, I, I knew what it is. <laughs> like I knew it was one. All you do is move your viruses. I, I know your strategy. Oh, now he's boosted. First, wait, this is a real game? And yeah, I mean, it might as well just be fictional because it's supposed to be this huge weeby esport, but it's actually an adaptation from some random board game from the 80s called Ghosts. But I'd be lying to you if I said this wasn't both extremely cool and a legitimately fun game, because luckily, there's actually an official version we can play that was sold at Comic at 80. Obviously, as the king of weeaboos, I had to buy an actual copy, but for those of you weeps who can't, there's an electronic version. I'll talk about where to get it at the end. So you might think of Reinet Access Battle as like kind of a cross between checkers and poker. Hmm. This is all, this is all, this is very interesting what I'm doing here. This is very interesting. <laughs> Shit. Which one is the virus? What would, would he boost the virus? That's exactly what I do. But maybe he would do the opposite. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> would he do exactly what I, he'd do the opposite. Oh, fuck. Yes! <laughs> Dude, it's all just trickery. Shit! Each player has eight pieces, four link cards, and four virus cards, which all start face down. You take turns moving your cards across the board. If one of your cards gets to your opponent's server port, here, you can move it into your stack. If you move onto one of your opponent's cards, you capture it into your stack. You win if you get four link cards in your stack, and you lose if you get four virus cards in your stack. But see, now, now, now I, have, I have two link cards. All I need is two more. So if I can find your link cards, then I, then I basically win. The link card in the corner, damn it! <laughs> Fuck! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> the way that you yell at it, dude, you're just like, it's in the corner! Like, <laughs> Fuck. Oh. These can be any combination of yours or your opponent's cards. You can also spend your turn playing one of four different terminal cards. Boost allows your cards to move two spaces in a turn. It takes a turn to equip or unequip. Firewall places an obstruction on the board. Your opponent has to move around this while you can move through it. This also creates a safe space for your pieces on the board. It takes a turn to place or remove. Virus Checker turns one of your opponent's cards face up. It can only be used once per game. 404 Not Found swaps two of your cards and places them face down if they've been revealed by Virus Checker. It can also only be used once per game. Now which one's the link card? Mm. <laughs> oh my god. So, big thanks to my friend Pat from Wires Don't Talk for helping me on with this video. He does analysis of music and games and shit. I also did a video with him on the worst anime of all time. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video, along with his channel, which you should also totally check out. I wasn't kidding about being the world's greatest player, by the way, so here's my crash course on strategy. You want to be aggressive. Here's why. Take a look at this game against Pat. I played aggressively and took out four of his cards. Two link cards and two viruses. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm telling you as a friend. Oh! Don't do it. You bitch. You oh your first reaction might be like, well, that means you're about even. But that's wrong because you can't just consider your own win and loss conditions. You also need to think about your opponents. Pat has zero link cards. To win, he can either take four link cards or give me two viruses. But I don't need to take his cards. My win condition is simple. Upload two link cards. Only one, actually, I'll get to this point in a bit. Now, you might point out that I'm forced to play defensively because I can't take Pat's cards, but I don't. I have to play conservatively, but that's not the same thing as playing defensive. Pat has to play defensively because he can't just let my cards upload. I no longer need to take his cards to win, but he needs to take mine. Even though I can play conservatively and avoid taking his cards, until he starts taking mine, which he still has to be careful about, I have more agency because I have more cards on the board to move. By taking a lot of his cards, even if I take a couple of viruses, I get to force Pat into the game I want to play. This game is very, very snowball-y. So I think opening aggressively is just strictly the better way to play. You want to boost often, and early in order to take your opponent's cards. It's okay to take the occasional virus because link cards are literally twice as important as taking virus cards. So if you can reliably take one of each, it's basically always worth it. Sure, you have to consider the risk of taking only viruses, but there's two things you need to consider. One, because it's like poker, this isn't a game you play one round of. You play several, adjusting to the odds in your opponent's play. And two, the other effect of playing aggressively is removing your opponent's cards from the board and giving you more room to upload, meaning taking on more risk early makes your later play far less risky. My standard opening has been to immediately boost one card across the center of the board. 
if Pat ignores it, I can choose to either start taking his cards or upload it if it's a link card. To stop it, he has two options. One, to take it, which is bad if it's a virus. Two, not to defend, but instead to counterattack across the board and force me to move other pieces so I don't just run away with complete control of the game. So now let's talk about the items. First, obviously boost is the most important. You might think having to equip and unequip boost is a huge handicap, but I'm almost positive that's wrong. You always want to have a card that's boosted. First, you make up for the time equipping and unequipping it if you move a boosted unit twice. The board is eight spaces long. It takes seven turns to move across without boosting. You will make up this time. And even if you move a boosted unit only twice, you don't just make up the time spent equipping boost. It's actually more valuable because boost also gives you more agency. You have far more flexibility in movement and you can attack non-boosted cards when they can't attack you. And if you can force your opponent into taking your card, you don't even need to unequip it. If you're planning to move a card more than once, boost it. Now, obviously, once the game evolves into a state where you need to make back and forth decisions, you can't just be sitting there boosting a single card onto your opponent's side, but you should always have boost equipped on something because it gives you so much more agency. Again, a boosted card can attack non-boosted cards without stepping into range of being attacked itself. That is huge. Boost is basically OP. Boost, boost, boost. Next, the other reusable item is Firewall, which creates a safe space for you. This took a few more off-camera games with Pat to really figure out, and I think it's the difference between a good player and a truly great player. First, it's one of the counters to boost. A boosted card has to go around it, slowing it way down. I oh, shit, defense. I can't, oh, I, I can't move through that. Oh, I, I see, I see. I had to stop the boost somehow. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I know, what you, I know what you got going on now. I'm just... I'm playing defense. Oh, Put it by your upload zone and your ability to defend basically doubles because not only do you obstruct your opponent's movement into an already narrow space, your cards are allowed to pass through it, creating a safe space for you. This is this is the chess aspect, right? Yeah, here. this is the chess aspect. Okay. Just like planning the movements. But the counter to this is to actually use Firewall aggressively. Let's break down some advanced strategy. With Firewall, you can change your goal from being your opponent's difficult to reach server port to these squares in the middle of the board. Uh, wait, what? I hear you say. Let me show you. With boost activated, you can upload from right here, meaning your opponent is going to want to defend this. To block your opponent's defense, put a firewall there. That's right, if you can put up a firewall here and move your link card there safely, you get a free upload. So then the next obvious step is moving your link card here because if your card gets here safely, it can then freely jump to the firewall. In other words, getting your card safely here means a free upload. Now there is a counter to this. Your opponent can put their firewall down to block you, but that isn't even that good because there are still other paths to both their upload port and this firewall you've set up. So they're leaving the rest of their board wide open just to block one of your attack routes. Again, being aggressive is basically a strict advantage. Now for the once per game consumables. Virus Checker turns one of your opponent's cards face up. Obviously helpful. Now, they can turn it back upside down with the other consumable, 404 Not Found, which switches two of your cards and turns them both face down. But 404 Not Found has other uses, so you might just want to concede the information when your opponent plays it. The best use is actually to switch positions. If you put a virus card at their upload and switch it for a link card, you get a free point. So again, we see playing aggressively gets rewarded. Now which one's the link card? Mm. Oh my god. Now which one's the oh link card? Oh my god. Ah. That was so well played. Because like, oh man, what if... Oh shit. You bitch! Yes. If you manage to upload only a single card, you only need to take half your opponent's link cards because you can swap a virus for your last link card and take the game. And get a virus here, swap it for a link card in safety, and then upload it for free. So again, this is why I said you want to aggressively remove your opponent's card from the board. You only need three points, and then you can use 404 not found for the last. It's tempting. He's, he's, he's tempting me with that card. Oh, I want to take that card so bad. I'm not falling for it. I'm going for the exit. So that was a virus. I was right. It was a virus. <laughs> I, I was right. Only with viruses. Right. Yeah, so you generally want to save your consumables for late game when information becomes more valuable. Because the start of the game is about mind gaming your opponent with your setup in order to take the first advantage by taking link cards or giving them viruses. Good cards. <laughs> ah, I'm not doing it. I'm not falling for it. Oh my god. I'm not falling for the it. Baby. 
All right, go ahead. You can upload it all you want. I know it's a virus. Oh, it's a link it. card. <laughs> is it? Oh. <laughs> Oh, it is. Oh, oh my I gotta... God. Oh, I got a boost. I must boost. Once you've narrowed down their cards, you can use your consumables to sniff out the rest. Those are definitely your Shit. links. Those are your links. Are these your link cards? I'm gonna win. Uh-oh. Because <laughs> you move your virus. I know you play. Ah, oh, it's virus. Did yes. I... No! <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. It's really simple, but the bluffing aspect of it gives it so much depth. Which one of these is the virus? What do you move the virus away from it? That seems crazy. That's too crazy. There's no way you would do that. It's this one. Yes! Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so now that I've completely sold you on this game, where to find it? Well, wait first. Again, big thanks to Pat for helping me figure out this game. And again, you should totally check out the other video we made together as well as his channel. And if this video was totally sick, you should step on the like button. So there have literally been several people who've made working versions of the game, but the one I've been using, which is the only one that seems to be maintained and or finished, is from Italian programmer, I'm gonna fuck this up, for really Vito for Windows, Android, and iPhone. He's developing, publishing, and hosting the game all for free in his spare time. So maybe even consider donating to his server cost if you start playing it. And if you wanna just try out the game by yourself, there's a bot you can play against. It's really bad, but it'll help you get a feel for the game. It's super fun. Who knows, maybe if I ever try live streaming, I can do Ryanet Battlers. So this video was part of my series analyzing in depth, literally every single episode of Science Gate. This is gonna cover episode 17 in Fetus Nyan Nyan, but I realized I talked about everything I was gonna say about her in episodes 9 and 10. So I hope you'll agree this was a pretty cool substitution. Next week we go back to the analysis with episode 18 as we talk about how basically every single character in Steins Gate is autistic. As always, thank you so much for your time friends, and I will see you in the next video. I am only playing strategic- like just play slower, you just keep boosting- <laughs> Yes! Stop <laughs> boosting! Uh, Play slow! <laughs> okay, okay, alright. Uh.